أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to Theology Lesson Number 11 This recording um, is instead of the live lesson where uh, we forgot to record it so uh, I'll try to be brief just repeating uh, some of what we've said last time uh, in the live lesson so that those who missed the live lesson can still have some some sort of reference uh, to refer to and perhaps ask questions if uh, necessary. So in uh, today's lesson, inshallah, we will uh, start the prophethood section of the uh, Aqidah lesson where we are going to be talking about necessary attributes for the prophets what is impossible for them, what is possible for them, and also um, the miracles. Then we will start talking about the uh, unseen, which we call in Arabic Sam'iyat. As we talked before, um, the Aqidah, most, most of the time, in the books, the textbooks, are div- is divided into three sections. Uh, divine Theology, which is Ilahiyat, which we finished last time and um, the prophethood, which is um, al-nubuwat, and uh, the unseen, which is al-sam'iyat. Starting with prophethood, the Sheikh is saying, وَصِفْ جَمِيعَ الرُّسْلِ بِالْأَمَانَةِ وَالصِّدْقِ وَالتَّبْلِيغِ وَالْفَطَانَةِ So describe all messengers, and these also include uh, prophets as virtuous as well as truthful describe them with a complete delivery of the message that they have fulfilled the delivery of the message they fulfilled their duties uh, and also with fatana which is the sharpness smartness that they are um, uh, at the utmost level of, of uh, intellectual uh, abilities uh, comparing to to other humans وَيَسْتَحِيلُ ضِدُّهَا عَلَيْهِمِ وَجَائِزٌ كَلَكْلِ فِي حَقِّهِمِ this line, mean, this line means that the opposite of these attributes, so the four attributes we've just um, talked about or, or, or mentioned, amana, صِدْق, تَبْلِيغ, فَطَانَة in Arabic, all of these, the opposite of them, are impossible for the prophets. Um, as we will see, the opposite of those uh, attributes means uh, that or would lead to as a consequences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a shortcoming in his attributes as we will see which is impossible and therefore they have to be attributed the prophets have to be attributed with these four attributes what is possible for them is normal human being actions such as eating sleeping getting married and so on and then the sheikh is saying irsaluhum tafaddulun wa rahmah lil'alamina jallamu lin'ni'mah and this addresses an issue with the uh, Al-Mu'tazila uh, who say that the, um, the uh, prophet or, or sending prophets and messengers to humankind is uh, an obligation, is an obligatory uh, action on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a mandatory. So in Ahl Sunnah position, we say no, it's actually an act of, of grace and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, so let's talk about the first attribute, amana, virtuousness. It's also called preservation, isma. And this means that prophets are preserved from doing haram, whether internally with their hearts, like uh, envy somebody or uh, having a lust uh, of uh, of some sort or anything like that. Uh, also, like in actions, they, can, they also don't do anything haram. And scholars said not just haram, not just forbidden, it's even the makruh, which um, as, as you know, if anybody uh, studied some fiqh, the makruh is a grade li- or a grade which is lower than haram. Also, this makruh, bad, it's a bad action, even if there is no necessarily um, uh, punishment set for it. Uh, it's still um, not not good action, uh, not a moral thing or anything like that, and therefore that's also uh, is is uh, inapplicable or impossible for them, for the prophets. 
Right. So why is that? Because had this not been the case, doing what is forbidden by the prophets would have been an act of obedience at the same time. Because they have been sent to show and demonstrate, lead by example, and all that kind of things. Others, those who are supposed to be following them, they are sent to show them what they need to do. So if they did something wrong, haram or forbidden, that's basically contradiction. That goes, it goes against the purpose of sending them. And um, clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in the Quran, Ala Imran, Surah Ala Imran, Say, O Prophet, if you sincerely love Allah, then follow me. And therefore, they are, we are obliged to follow the Prophets in their actions, what they do. They show us what should we do, what, how should we worship Allah, how we should be the most upright version of ourselves and, and be servant of Allah in every aspect, with every breath. So if they do something wrong, then it kind of uh, uh, goes, goes against uh, this, this notion. So moving on to truthfulness, Sidq. Again, the prophets have to be attributed with truth, with truthfulness. They they are true, uh, they are um, they are honest, they are truthful. Now, had this not been the case, then um, the message that Allah Subhanahu wa, ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with the prophets would have been susceptible to lies. And that would mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, um, because he, he supported them with, with, with miracles. So he sent the messengers, the messenger delivered a message, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported this message with, with miracle, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, okay, this is true. As a sign of that, I am giving miracle to support what they are saying. If they are saying lies, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lying, whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, um, know what they are going to say, or so. As I said earlier, the opposite of all these uh, attributes circles back and goes back, and will uh, will will have a consequences that leads to shortcoming on Allah's attribute, which is impossible, as we said. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al Najm, "Your fellow man is neither misguided nor astray, nor does he speak of his own whim. It's only a revelation sent down to him." So since we are talking about a miracle, so, so let, let, let's um, define a miracle and set the conditions. What is considered a miracle um, in, in this, um, in, in Tawheed and Aqeedah? A miracle is an, is an occurrence of, of um, an event or an action that breaks the laws of normality. It breaks the rule of physics as we know. It, it is something that is not normal. And it is not just something that is not normal. It's accompanied with the challenge that the, the, the person um, uh, claiming to be, uh, to, um, to be prophet is challenging others to come up with something similar, if you can. Because if you can do it, then it's normal. It, it is within the human uh, ability. And that basically means it's not a miracle. So it, it should be... Um, the, it, it breaks laws of, of normality, and as a as a sign of, of or to to make sure or to demonstrate and affirm that this is outside of the ability of a human, it will have to be challenge, set in a challenge. Okay, try and try your best to do something similar, and uh, that person ha- will have to 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 de- to declare and say, "I am a prophet. I have been sent by God." Right. So, if somebody, for example, performs something that is out of the uh, the laws of normality as we know, but they didn't claim to be prophets, then the that that is not a miracle. Now, this leads us to the discussion about uh, tawatur and mutawatir, because the the events, those miracles that occurred, you can hear about them whether in a mutawatir way, which is going to be to explain, or in a non-mutawatir way, or what we call ahad. So mutawatir is a description used to refer to information or event that have been transmitted 
and spread through places and time in a way that provide definitive authenticity of the information received and that it matches the original. So what I mean by that is an event happened or an information, somebody says something, and it, you know, um, event, let's say some group of people saw an event happening in front of their eyes. Then that event was like a lot of people saw it. And then they told them, they delivered those information, okay, to their families or to their friends who were not there. And they affirmed to them that what they have seen or heard. Then their families started talking to others and so on. And that information and that event, the, like what happened, has been spreading and people knowing about it and learning about it. Now, when we, at any level of that transmission, um, any generation or any place, when you track back those who are saying these events, you find that they are numerous chain of narrations or numerous transmitters, and they have, um, like the, the, the notion of the, those pe pe people um, meeting somewhere and uh, agree to fabricate the, the event is, uh, is impossible. It, it just can't happen. Because in, in everywhere around you, in ma many places, ma so many people saying the same exact thing happened, um, and they haven't met bef before to, to, uh, to fabricate it. So the only logical explanation is that event actually happened. So that's what we call by tawatur. That, that transmission process is tawatur, the information or this event, the way it reached us, is mutawatir. For example, we all know that there is a, a city called Paris in France, and it's the capital of, of France. Everybody knows that. Even those of you who have never been there or never saw it, knows there is a Paris, and it is a, a, a definitive piece of information. Anybody coming and say, no, actually, I didn't see Paris before. I've never been there, so Paris doesn't exist. It, it is just a lie. Uh, I think if you heard somebody saying that, you would say he is, he is either joking or uh, he is uh, crazy. Now, put this aside. Now we know what tawatir is and what mutawatir is. When we say, that, for example, Quran is mutawatir, we mean that it was being delivered throughout like generations and everywhere in all the cities of Islam, all countries, the same way people have never met each other, people have never seen each other, all the way back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. So what we have now, we are 100% certain and sure, there is no doubt whatsoever that what we are reading now as the Quran is the exact same thing that was revealed to the Prophet. Of course, us as, a, as, Mo, as Muslims believe it's revealed to the Prophet. Uh, those who doesn't believe um, in the Islam or, or non-Muslims uh, will deny it is revealed. They will say the Prophet, peace be upon him, there was a man called Muhammad and he basically came up with it. But no cynical scholar worth anything would cast any doubt on what we are, what, what we are having now as a, as a Quran. It's just, uh, they, they tried, a lot of Orientalists tried, but then basically they have been all shut, shut down and the mainstream, uh, um, like objective and, and respected scholarship uh, within even non-Muslims demonstrate with no, uh, with, without any shadow of a doubt that what we read now, what we call Quran, is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had. That's it. They say he fabricated it, or it is he, he's like he authored it. He was a genius, and he authored it. We say he's a prophet, and this is the word of God. That's the difference. But nobody would would say that what we have now is is not the, the same. And the reason for that is basically it was being delivered to us through Tawatur. So Tawatur gives hundred percent certainty that what we have now is is true. So what we have now is what we have that. A claim done by the Prophet, peace be upon him. He claimed that he is a prophet. He has been sent to 
humankind, jinn, and even all creatures. This claim itself is mutawatir. Everybody knows it. Okay, even non-Muslims, they will say, yeah, there, there was a man, he claimed to be a prophet. So this is one of the conditions of, uh, of a miracle, remember, that he has to claim, that person has to claim to be a prophet. Now, he has done miracles as to prove his claim, which is, again, check, he done that. If he claimed to be a prophet, and there was miracles to prove and support his claim, therefore, that, that the only logical conclusion is that he is a true messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his claim is true. Right, so what is the miracles that he uh, that he have done? That's really the question now. So we know that he, he, he himself, his claim is mutawatir. Um, we, uh, d- there are miracles and those miracles are also, some of them mutawatir. We're going to talk about that uh, in a second. And if that is the case, as we we'll see now, then he must be a prophet. That's, that's basically uh, what we are, we are going through now. So what are those miracles? Of course, the pinnacle of, of all miracles is the Qur'an. This is the main miracle of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is what distinguishes the Prophet from any other Prophet. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, performed miracles similar to every other Prophet. But on top of that, he was also given the Qur'an, which is even like miracles of miracle of the miracles. So the Qur'an came and challenged Arabs to try and fabricate something similar to it. And during that time, Arabs were like the eloquency and the usage of the language in the best and most efficient way and, and, and in an eloquent way was basically the mo- the, their most important thing. They would make markets just to listen to poet, uh, p- poets and listen to poetry. Um, basically, uh, a, a poet can um, make or break you. Kings at the time or tribe leaders and, and so on will receive poets, try to uh, um, uh, just pay them and let them uh, try to, to, to get them to say something good about them because it will just fly, it will make their um, uh, their uh, uh, tribe better than the other tribes and so on. It, it was basically a great deal of, of pride uh, and um, uh, their life uh, to a great extent revolved around it. Uh, around 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 that, and that's why there was always a challenge between poets in every tribe to be better and do some more um, eloquent uh, uh, poem and so on and so forth. So when the Quran came and told them, okay, here here, here is the Quran, here is the word of God. If you don't believe it is the word of God, it is within the ability of a human. You know that no other human can do better than you. Let us see what you can do, and that was a challenge. And they failed to to do even uh, something um, that comes close to the so- shortest surah in the Quran, just one line or or three ayahs. Um, and uh, th- the proof of their failure is basically they went to war against Muslims, and it would have been much easier for everybody to just fabricate a short surah and basically. Uh, be able to demonstrate that uh, the Quran is, is doable, it's not really a word of God, and that's it. That would have basically uh, put put off the, the, the Islam uh, invitation or, or the Islam um, uh, da'wah, the, 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 uh, the deen, and basically that would have been the end of it. So uh, some actually tried, and it was laughable, um, and you don't hear much about that. Wh- one of the failed or miserable tries, you can see, um, uh, that was Musaylam al kadhab Basically, he, he tried to do something similar to the Quran, um, uh, and uh, come up with like a revelation like the Prophet, because he uh, claimed to be a pr- the Prophet, 
um, after the, the our uh, the prophet peace be upon him so he he claimed to be a prophet and he sent to the prophet peace be upon him asking him to give the the uh, um, the leadership to him after uh, the prophet passes basically and of course uh, our prophet peace be upon him uh, replied uh, replied to that quite aggressively and, and firmly uh, and warned about this man, uh, Musaylima al kazab Anyway, he, what he said is, Al-Feel um al-Feel, wa ma adaraka ma al-Feel, lahu dhanabun tawil. Al-Feel is an elephant. So he's just trying to say something like, Al-Haqqa ma al-Haqqa, wa ma al-Haqqa, wa ma adaraka ma al-Haqqa. Just something in, along that line. So basically he's just mimicking it. But even that, he's not coming with something original. But even that, he he couldn't do it because... Um, for example, in Quran, al malhaqa, it is something so that nobody saw it. Okay, so it is unseen, it is unknown. So that expression, that way of expressing it, it, it is um, intriguing. It is basically letting your imagination go and try to imagine something that, wow, what could it be? Like, it should be very afraid or very excited or very worried about what's going to happen because we have never seen it before. I don't know what, what is it. You can't imagine it. So, al-haqa, mal-haqa, wa ma adaraka mal-haqa. Again, wa ma adaraka is something that, uh, when something that you've never seen before, it's basically as, uh, you know, let your imagination go and try to think of the most difficult thing, for example, that you would uh, face and, and so on. But when this man tried to do something similar, what did he do? He said, al feel, al feel is elephant. Everybody knows the elephant. It, it is nothing. There is nothing intriguing about it. There is nothing um, uh, that uh, like um, pushes them to try and maybe use the imagination and try to imagine a feel. Yeah, you know the, the elephant. You know the elephant, what elephant is, is, is nothing. Um, and then he basically is stating the obvious, uh, obvious. Uh, the elephant has a long tail. Uh, the, the, uh, the nose of, of the elephant. The teal is, is uh, shadid, is uh, tough. Yeah, okay, so we, those are some characteristics of an elephant. Everybody knows that. So what is, what are you trying to say? It's, it's basically uh, laughable, as I said. But with the Quran, there is no contradictions. No ayah is wrong. You cannot prove that any ayah is, a, is false. Even if the ayah is addressing um, uh, like a, a universal uh, or, or something in the universe, something that they didn't know about. And then um, with the scientific advances, we, we started to learn about it. Uh, again, those advancement, advancement in science will not be contradictory to what is in the Qur'an. So the Qur'an, no matter what you know at every age, every era, it's still applicable, it's still correct, still correct. nothing wrong with it. It's miraculous for sure. Okay, so um, that said, some people have the wrong, uh, the wrong idea that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had only the Qur'an as a, as a miracle. And because they don't quite understand the eloquency of the Qur'an and uh, its miraculous way of, of um, expression and so on and so forth, um, they, they say, okay, I mean, why the Prophet didn't just come up with or um, had more um, physical, material kind of uh, miracles? Um, and that's it. Now... This is quite wrong because the Prophet actually had a lot of miracles. Way, way may, like more miracles, miracles that, than any other Prophet and that you can think of. So um, an example of the numerous miracles that the Prophet, peace be upon him, performed was um, making gravel do tasbih in his palm. So when he hold the gravel, uh, everybody around him will hear the gravel doing tasbih, subhanallah, 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 like that. So as if, um, of course, the, the ayah, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Everything is basically doing tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you don't understand its uh, tasbih. So it is as if the Prophet's palm is an amplifier. When you put the, the, 
the rocks or the gravel on it, it basically um, amplifies the tasbih and everybody around it, around him, uh, would 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 hear it. The Prophet peace be upon him. Rocks were, were talking to him. They were saying greeting, O Prophet, uh, in Mecca. Uh, not only rocks did did tree trunk, and we talked about that dead uh, tree trunk before in. Um, the Arba'in Mawaya course, um, if I remember correctly. Um, animals will talk to him and so on. Uh, also, water will burst from his fingers. Um, in many, many occasions, they didn't have enough water to uh, uh, to drink and to do wudu. Uh, just very, you know, a pot of water or something like that that doesn't cover uh, or is not sufficient for the entire army. They were being like in a um, in a battle or, or uh, like going to a battle or something the prophet would put his hand in that very very little amount of water and it will burst like a river that will be enough for everybody to drink and uh, uh, and, and have wudu as well and, and, and so on um, also food and water multiplies by his blessing so uh, the prophet peace be upon him will um, and in many occasions as well. Um, uh, for example, in, in uh, Ghazwat al-Khandaq, or Ghazwat al-Ahzab, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, one of the companions, uh, invited him to uh, like something to eat, to a dinner. And because he saw that uh, the Prophet has, hadn't eaten for, for a long time and uh, he seemed hungry and so on, so he went back home quickly, fixed something, asked her, her, his wife to fix something for the Prophet. His wife told him, okay, just bring the Prophet and a few with him, a couple of with him, a couple, uh, or a few, uh, because he didn't have enough food for, for everybody. So uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah went to the Prophet and just whispers, um, oh Prophet, I prepared something for you. Uh, and come, uh, you and, uh, and a couple of, of your companions, just uh, choose uh, a few and, and uh, come with me. We only have... And he told him what we, they have, which is just quite a small thing. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to the entire army, come with me. And, and that was over a thousand. They went to, um, to, the, to um, Jabir's house. The Prophet ordered that the pot where the, the food is stay covered. Nobody touches it, it until he comes. Nobody sees it. Uh, the Prophet went there. He still covered it. It was basically saying tasbih and, and, and tahmid and so on, praising to Allah, and um, uh, taking some after some and like from the pot without uncovering it. And 10 people will, will come inside, they will eat, they will go. Again, the Prophet will go again to the pot and, and put pour some in the, in, the, in the plates and so on, serve it to the next 10 and next 10 and the next 10 and so on. The entire army ate. And then what is left in the pot was basically the exact same amount that uh, they started with. And this didn't just, that, that one occasion, but again that uh, miracle of um, multiplication of food and water uh, happened in so many other occasions. Um, these miracles are confirmed and they've been transmitted to us. We know about them through continuous isnad, sahih isnad, uh, and so on. But not only that, it's because the events uh, were too much or too many events like that, happened like that, it reached what we call tawatur ma'nawi. It is tawatur, so basically um, in the same sense like what we talked about before about tawatur, but it d different because in, in a way that the, the the meaning, the ma'na, the meaning of the occasion is, is what is reached the tawatur, but not the occasion or the event itself. So this event, for example, about uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, um, it, it is still akhbar ahad, is still uh, hadith uh, uh, that has been narrated through many multiple chains in, in, in Sahih Bukhari and here and here and so on, but it, had, it, it didn't reach the level of tawatur by itself. But the, the, the meaning of the notion of the Prophet multiplication of, of food and blessing had reached re, 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 through other events similar to what happened. 
So we call that tawatur ma'nawi. The Quran is um, the, the miracle that we still observe directly until now. So that's why it, has, it is actually more effective, more efficient, more, um, more personal to us than anything else, all the other miracles that we, we, we hear about, even though they reach us through Tawatul Ma'nawi, as we talked about, uh, still the Qur'an is something that you can observe for yourself and you can test for, by, for, by, by yourself. And of course, no other prophet was given something like, like it. Um, now, why is a miracle such a strong sign of the truthfulness of the uh, truthfulness of the messenger? Now, imagine that um, you are in the presence of, of a king, for example, and um, you are in the, the main hall where the king is. You can see him, you can see the, the people around him, uh, the ministers and whatever. Um, and then uh, some some person stood up among the others, um, and uh, that person basically basically said, "I am a messenger from the king," and he um, handed me or gave me a, a, a orders or a message, including certain or, including orders that I will tell you. And those orders are not mine; they are the king's. Everybody knows the king is, is watching. So everybody in the room, the, those that crowd asked that person of proof, you know, you're just sitting here and suddenly claim to be uh, uh, sent by the king um, to instruct us to do something. And give us your proof, something to support your claim. That person then said, all right, uh, my proof is that the king will change his normal routine by standing up and sitting down three times. That's something that the king never done before. They have never seen the king do, do it. It's something that is, is basically against or not normal, against what they usually do, it's not his routine. Um, and then um, the, also the crowd can see that the king is looking at them, he's listening, and um, the king actually stands up and sin, sits down three times. By that time, after the king done that, the crowd acquired, now acquired a definitive knowledge that that person who is claiming to be sent by the king is in fact uh, uh, truthful. He is actually who he says uh, to be, or he, uh, he, who he says he is. Um, and uh, also this necessary knowledge now is, is known to everybody in the room and when everybody in the room go out to their families and talk about it, explain what happened and so on, and everybody talk to everybody else, and it, the, the, that event, the, the news of that event start to break out and, and spread, um, that is tawatur, that is enough. You, you don't have to uh, be in the room to, to actually uh, believe it, since it reaches you through that kind of, of tawatur process as we talked about. So moving on, the, uh, the attribute, uh, the third attribute is conveyance, tablir. Um, you, you need to affirm that the prophets have fully and, and completely delivered the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to, um, to do. Their duty is basically being fulfilled. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, O Messenger, convey everything revealed to you from your Lord. If you don't, then you have not delivered his message. So the Prophet is required uh, to deliver everything, and uh, this, this is indeed what, what happened. Um, otherwise, if, the, if a Messenger didn't fully deliver the message, that he was required to, to deliver, that is basically considered betrayal to, uh, to, to, to the mission. He, he basically uh, led people or will lead the people astray. The, the message sent by Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his kalam, his instructions. 
um, and, and it's basically that the kalam, the, the attribute of kalam as we talked um, before, about before. Uh, and that's why it is important to affirm kalam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody, all Muslims, affirmed kalam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has kalam, that the Quran is kalamullah, the word of God. There is no doubt about that among Muslims. Even Mu'tazila, for example, as, as like everybody knows, Mu'tazila says Allah doesn't have kalam and so on and so forth. That is actually inaccurate, it's incorrect. All Muslims, including Mu'tazila and everybody else under the Islam umbrella, affirms that the Quran is kalamullah, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his kalam. The, as we talked about before, the, the issue is whether uh, this kalam is actually created or not. Or as, or as an attribute. And we talked about that, addressed that before, so no, no, no point of repeating it. But the point, the important point here is because the, we affirm that kalam, or the reason that we affirm kalam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has, a, has kalam is if there isn't a kalam if, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there isn't word of Allah, if, if, if there isn't such thing, then there is no message. Because what, what is it that the message that a God is going to give a messenger of, of, or a prophet to deliver if, if there isn't a message to start with or something to, to, to send to start with, right? So that's why um, the, this, uh, like the kalam has to be affirmed. So the message sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indication of his kalam. It's as, as we talked about when the relations of kalam, you remember if we talked about the relation of kalam, Refer to this lesson, I think you will find, uh, like, uh, that we, we explain that in a little bit more detail. And I, I think we talked about that uh, from the aspect of entailing, doing or not doing. It's called commanding or forbidding. From the aspect of affirming or denying something, it's called, called informing. Um, and this is where it differs from uh, the knowledge. All right, so um, the attribute after that is fatana. Um, uh, the sharpness of the mind, the smartness, um, uh, intellect, uh, intellectual capacity. Um, you need to understand that uh, messengers, all of them, and the prophets are the most intellectual minds among human beings. They went, they were, went, they were sent to establish conclusive arguments and refute others' argument and so on. So they cannot be beaten in putting an argument forward. Um, any genius you may think of is actually um, nothing. He, his, his smartness and his sharpness is nil uh, comparing to a, uh, to a prophet. Now, uh, what is not befitting to, to prophets? Um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single one of those because we explained that before in the live lesson. Again, this is just to, to record uh, what we talked about. Um, but uh, as we said before, any the, the, the opposite of what we talked about um, is basically uh, cannot be affirmed because it leads to uh, shortcoming on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, attributes. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't know who to send or uh, chose some, somebody who he shouldn't have uh, chosen or anything like that he would as if Allah didn't know you know so all that kind of things are basically against uh, the the all um, knowledge all knowledgeable and all the other attributes that we we affirmed in the previous lessons right so what is possible for them um, it is possible for the prophets to yeah every every human aspect that doesn't lead to uh, under understating not understanding I uh, should have uh, corrected that actually, but yeah, uh, should um, every human aspect that doesn't lead to understating their prophethood status is okay. Anything opposite to that, anything that will lead to um, to people turn away from them, uh, um, is basically uh, not not uh, applicable to them. Anything that is uh, necessary for a human, normal human being, like eating, drinking, sleeping, also they, they do that, it's, uh, for sure. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessary, even if it is not necessary, such as marriage, eating uh, fruits, 
um, and so on. Again, that also possible for prophets uh, to perform and to do because they are human beings at the end of the day. Also, if a hardship happens to them, this is because either um, to increase their rewards or to make a rule uh, for the followers, Sharia, to make to make some some kind of, of rule out of it. Uh, they go through certain hardships, so, uh, so certain consequences will, will happen, and based on that, Sharia, Ahkam, and rules will be uh, dictated. Uh, also, um, for their followers to take solace in them. So basically, when you um, when somebody know that the Prophet peace be upon him suffered such and such um, things and hardship, if someone goes through such a hardship, he will say, "All right, the Prophet was better than me and way better than me, and uh, he went through that hardship. So um, it, it, it is not that because I am bad or, or Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't love me or doesn't like me or anything like that. It's just a test, and I need to." Uh, to to uh, uh, go through it and be patient. Um, also, it is a reminder that life is is basically um, worthless to the uh, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This life is totally worthless. Um, if it was worth or if it worth anything, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wouldn't have hal- wouldn't have allowed uh, a prophet to to have any any hardship whatsoever. It is because it is actually nothing. It accounts and counts for nothing. It is not a real life. Uh, the real life is actually the the, the the eternal life. That is the real real life. Um, so because this life is basically nothing, um, it, it's also as a reminder for that. And also, uh, one last point here is, uh, it is not actually on the screen, for, but another point also is applicable is um, so that when somebody goes through a hardship, others don't judge him or don't, don't judge them. Um, so because the Prophet went through hardship, and the Prophet is a Prophet, he doesn't do anything bad or anything wrong or anything forbidden, so that when someone uh, goes through a hardship, maybe it was it is a punishment because of his sins or anything like that, but he is covered. So people would not judge him and say, okay, yeah, he must have been going through that hardship because he's a bad person or he did something wrong or he had a great sin or th- something like that. So it, w- it will be set, it will be covering uh, that, that, that person. Um, and here basically uh, is a rebuttal of the Mu'tazila position. Mu'tazila said the sending messenger is mandatory, as we said. Uh, and basically, um, there is, on the other hand, other non Muslim sects and religions argue that it is impossible for a, for a divine to send messengers uh, as God can only be reached by intellect, it cannot be reached through like transmission of information or anything like that. Um, so, uh, but bo- both of those uh, positions are incorrect, or the other, like both sides of the extreme, basically. Uh, and Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah say, no, of course, there are prophets. Uh, but it is a pure act of mercy and, and um, uh, blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he could have not sent any mess- messengers. That's uh, another topic we perhaps we can, we can address in, in more detail in the inshallah um, future courses. So now we'll move on to the unseen part uh, of uh, today's lesson. We'll cover uh, almost half of it and then inshallah the uh, rest of it is going to be uh, and the following lesson. The uh, Sheikh is saying, وَيَلْزَمُ الْإِمَانُ بِالْحِسَابِ وَالْحَشْرِ وَالْعِقَابِ وَالثَّوَابِ It's necessary to believe in the final judgment, the gathering, punishment, and reward. وَالنَّشْرِ وَالصِّرَاطِ وَالْمِيزَانِ وَالْحَوْضِ وَالنِّرَانِ وَالْجِنَانِ Resurrection, the path, the scale, the basin, Hellfire and the gardens, paradise. And that's what we'll be addressing uh, in this lesson, inshallah, uh, starting with the uh, resurrection, Al Nashr. It's also called Al Ba'ath. All of mankind will be resurrected on the day of reckoning. Their original parts will be gathered again. Two different opinions. You don't go to to fully non existence. It is just that your parts um, 
turn to dust and be scattered away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather them again and combine them again in, in, in your body. Or your body go to non-existence, except a part called ajab, al zamb and basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you back from non-existence. Body has been gathered again and combined into your body and you're basically resurrected from the grave. Everybody is, is driven, is moved to um, a renewed land where no sin ever was committed. And that happens for everybody, for everything, every creation, for those who ha are accountable and not accountable. Because as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, make everything die. There are different opinions except certain uh, individuals or, or, or certain angels or whatever, but uh, the, the general uh, matter is basically every, everything dies even angels will die, even, you know, any creatures was going to, living creatures are going to die, and then they will be resurrected and go to that um, re renewed land. Um, as they go, some will ride, some will walk, some will be on their feet, some will crawl, and, and so on and so forth, depending on, on your deeds and so on. So as people are moving to the to that uh, renewed land where the accountability will take place, holding to accountability, the hisab will take place. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala imposes uh, images on certain people, depending again on their uh, crimes during this life. So some will be on the shape of monkeys; will be imposed the shape of monkey. Those who um, committed adultery. Others will be like pigs, those who eat money gained through unjust and forbidden ways. Uh, Others will be resurrected blind. Uh, uh, and those are people who are ruling or making unjust judgment, judging others unjustly. So be very careful not to judge others, not to be judgmental. Um, uh, People chewing their own tongues with, with pus coming out of their mouths. Those are preachers whose, whose actions do not follow what they, they preach. They commit the opposite of what they preach, for example. So again, be very true with yourself. Then there is a holding to account in the final judgment. It's basically holding everyone accountable for their deeds, actions, sayings, etc. And uh, during that accounting, or being uh, being accounted for or accountable for what you have done, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks to to those people or to everybody. Again, Allah's speech is with no letter or sound, so it's either by lifting their covers, the hijab, and allowing them to become aware of the meanings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala signified within His internal self speech or by creating speech that they can hear. Uh, also, it could be from angels, or it could be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and angels. So it could be the, the speech and the, the, like who's asking the questions and so on and so forth. It could be angels as ordered from Allah. Uh, it could be like part of it from Allah, part of it from angels. It could be, uh, you know, every form of that. Uh, of course, it varies in difficulty and easiness. The easiest holding to account is between Allah and His servant, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts covers, nobody hears or listen or anything like that, so there is no embarrassment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outlines um, the, the person goods and bad deeds uh, and uh, telling him to... Um, telling him that he forgave the, the bad deeds and multiplied the good. So basically that's the easiest, which is not easy at all. It's, it's very hard. Um, and that's why there are um, uh, a blessed part of the Ummah. Uh, of course, that for, it goes for the prophets, and also uh, it is reported that 70,000 of the Ummah will go directly to paradise without being held to account. They are the, like the, the very true people to themselves. They, 
the hadith about about their characteristics and so on and so forth may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us um, like of them or with them um, and anyway so uh, that's um, the, the the holding to account then there is a reward and punishment of course um, it's rewarding the obedient and punishing the sinner uh, and that is not obligatory on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, it is impossible however not to happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised or said this is what's going to happen. So rewarding the obe- obedient and punishing the sinner in themselves, they are not um, mandatory on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not necessary. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised and said that is what is going to happen, then Allah doesn't lie. And therefore they became supported with or by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, saying they became impossible not to happen they will have to happen they will happen that doesn't necessarily mean that every sinner will be uh, punished may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive some of them or many of them um, but the, the uh, part of the sinners will have to go through punishment or some of the sinners depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discretion for sure um, the, the rewarding, of course, is by different means, depending on the deeds and sins. The rewarding and punishment is not just in the, um, in the, the final judgment, in the eternal life. It's also in the grave. So in the grave, reward and punishment uh, are happening to the body and the soul together. Even if the body is scattered, uh, even if someone got eaten by a shark or by lions or whatever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to uh, and have the power to link his soul to even a part of his body where he can feel the pain. Um, and after resurrection, definitely for bodies and souls as, as well, in the uh, afterlife and during the gathering and so on. Now, uh, believers with sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't forgive during accountability will enter hellfire for some time. They will have like a sentence. To, to go f- go through 100 years, 1,000 years, billion years, depending on their on what they have done and so on. They eventually, because they are believers, believers uh, eventually after they finish their sentence or being interse- or receiving intercession of that s- some sort, as we're going to be talking about the intercession, inshallah, next, uh, next lesson, um, uh, they can also go uh, after a while, after after maybe half the sentence or whatever. And after, or, or if there is no intercession for them, then they complete their their, um, their punishment and then they go to paradise. Of course, non-believers stay in hellfire, hellfire for eternity with no way or chance of getting out. Then there is a scale, the milzan. It's a scale that will weigh deeds and sins during judgment, and will um, and we the, the ayah says in uh, Surah Al Anbiya, and we will lay down the scales of justice for the day of resurrection, so no soul will be treated unjustly. Um, it is not for prophets, not for angels, and those who enter uh, paradise without being held to account. Um, some says it looks it looks similar to the la- to what we expect of life's scales, of these life's scales. You know, two hands, two sides. Um, some sides look uh, like the the um, good deeds are put on the uh, sides that is against or towards uh, paradise, um, and it is either put in a form of a light. Like it's embodiment, it became embodiment of some sort. The 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 actions, the deeds themselves, the amal that you have done, on the right side, and the bad ones on the left side, which is towards uh, the 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 hellfire, and that basically the bad deeds are um, dark, not darkness uh, form. Or it could be that the books and records that those deeds and those actions, bad or good, were written. They themselves, the records would be put uh, on the on the scale. Then we have the sirat, the path, the bridge, 
that is going to be over hellfire, where everyone will aim to cross to reach paradise, but only believers will succeed. Um, there are some accounts saying, or th- some records and hadith saying that uh, it is very narrow and very sharp. Uh, other hadith says it's wide. So, um, like to to combine these hadith and to to maybe it is a case that uh, it actually depends on who's who's passing on the deeds of of, of the person who's pa- who passes it. Um, if a good person is, is pass- passing, so it widens to him. And basically, he can easily uh, pass. Uh, if it is not, if he is not, if he is a bad person or a kafir or something, something like that, he becomes very narrow, very sharp, very difficult for him to to stay. He tries, uh, and then he falls. Um, it it is also that said that non-believers do not pass on it, go directly to hellfire. Um, some say they will will aim to, but uh, they will fail and they will be caught by like a, a, a hooks that come out of, of hellfire down down the, the that bridge that Surat and basically catch catches them. Uh, or it could be that um, some of them do directly to hellfire. Some directly go to, or some will will aim to to pass. Uh, those who pass on it go through different experiences as well. Like what we saw, what we said, it could be like it's going to be too sharp for for bad people or non-believers or sinners. It could be very wide for for others. But also, their passing speed differs. So some will will pass like in lamh al basar, in speed at the speed of light, very very fast, uh, and some will be crawling. So again, it, depending on their um, their their um, behave towards sins in this life. If they avoid the sins, they basically take speeds, take, takes a high speed at, at passing. If they don't avoid sins, then they are not that fast uh, at at the uh, at the sirat. Uh, there are claws, as I said, like hooks or claws that come out of hellfire and uh, try to catch his, those sinners. They are marked. They are dark. They have darkness on top of them, or something like that. And I'm just giving an example. And then they will be caught by those uh, claws, or maybe the claws will will scratch them. Uh, the claw may hit some of them, and they start falling. But they hang on the uh, on, on the surat by a thread, and then basically go out again, and so on. So the 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 passing of the surat. As, as I said, it could be as a, at the speed of light for some, but it could take many, 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 many years for others, if they ever passed. And um, as you can see, it, it all that are very scary and difficult, um, like experiences. Inshallah, the the last lesson, Inshallah, we'll talk about what we should be doing to to avoid that hardship. This is a real hardship. Then there is. The Hawd, the Prophet's basin. It's a, a very, very big basin full of water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's uh, probable that every Prophet has a, a basin for his followers. So that's a, an opinion, and it is a probable opinion. But anyway, the Prophet's, our Prophet's basin is the biggest, the best, and, and so on. Believers will be allowed to drink from it. Anyone who drinks from it enters paradise and doesn't feel thirst ever again. It is said that the basin is before the scale um, or after, or there are two basins, one after the scale, one before, uh, different opinions. Um, And because after drinking you don't feel thirst ever again, um, but what about we drinking in, in paradise? Drinking in paradise is only for pleasure, not for thirst. Uh, also, Mubtadi'a, those who innovated in religion, or unjust oppressors and committers of major sins will be pushed away from the basin until they are forgiven or, or um, are put into a certain accounting and so on and so forth, and then um, they may after that drink from the the basin 
or not. Maybe they um, have to go to hellfire first for a period and so on. So God knows what is going to happen to, to uh, Mubtadi'a, especially those who um, lie in their bid'a and, and cause people to go astray and so on. Because um, there are, of course, Mubtadi'a who are clear in their bid'a. They say, okay, no, we believe this way, and basically these are our evidence and so on. And they leave it to you, whether you you, con- you are convinced or not, or um, and so on. So these kind of Mubtadi'a are usually their danger on the Ummah is very limited because you really have to share their principles, their main, main principles and the way of thinking so that their bid'ah appeals to you. But others, they falsify records, they um, cheat, they commit a lot of other sins within their, their bid'ah. It's not just bid'ah, it's basically uh, way more uh, issues or, or sins with with their bid'ah by uh, fooling and cheating and, and lying and uh, uh, as I said, fabricating records um, and and so on, uh, and their bid'ah may have like a, a a very very bad consequences on the ummah, um, and so therefore, as you can see, the the muqtada is not just one one uh, uh, one group. So maybe some of them will be uh, uh, like pushed away first, uh, and then eventually they will drink. Some of them will have to go to uh, to hellfire for a little bit. It, it's all uh, 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 yani, Based on or, or to Allah subhanahu wa taala discretion. It just I'm, I'm just trying to 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 show you that um, it is not just one size fits all for anything. It, it, God knows what, what is going to happen. Every person could be treated differently. Okay, so that's why be careful about yourself and do, and those who you you are responsible for and those who you love. Right, so now we talked about hellfire, uh, The hell is a body of fire where um, the punishment takes place. It's for bodies and souls. Um, it is said that there are seven levels or seven houses within the, the fire. The least severe is the top level where, um, or which is designated for sinners of believers. So those of believers who have been basically going to hellfire uh, as a punishment for their uh, for committing sins and so on uh, have some sort of sentence that they go to hellfire for until they finish and then go back, back go to to to, uh, uh, to heaven um, and uh, after they leave it that level of, of the hellfire that house uh, is basically closed done it, its purpose done it just goes away it's not there anymore um, some scholars uh, like um, combine the names of those seven levels in in the uh, in that poem you see in front of you. Jahannamu lil Aasi. Jahannam is the name of the hellfire house for the uh, the sinner. Lada li Yahudiha, Jews in Lada, the second level. Wahut, as you can see, the first level is the least, and then as we go down, which is the top, and then as we go down, it basically intensifies the punishment and and so on and. Uh, the pain. Wahutama Darun Nasara. Wahutama is a house for the um, uh, Christians. Uli Samami. Sa'iru Adabu Sabiina wa Darihim. Sa'ir is the level for Sabiin, those who um, worshipped planets and and um, and so on. Majus Laha Sakar Majus, those who believed in uh, two gods, evil and, and, and bad god, and uh, the fire, the, the pray to the fire, and so on. Jahim Lidi Sonam Jahim is for those uh, pagans who worshipped the rocks and the, uh, the asnam that they, they built. Wahawiyah, the, the worst level, is for hypocrites. وَقِيتُهَا وَهَاوِيَةُ دَارُ النِّفَاقِ وَقِيتُهَا May Allah protect us from it. وَاسْأَلُوا رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ أَمْنًا مِنَ النِّقَمِ And of course when we say uh, the second level or the third level is for Jews and Christians, of course those who haven't 
uh, believed those so, so those are not the, like the the Jews who didn't reach believers level uh, to go to heaven because of course uh, Jews who believed in Moses for example uh, is is going to to uh, to paradise Christians who believed and followed Jesus uh, will go to paradise uh, during Jesus life and during Moses life and, and their time until the next prophet comes now paradise and uh, we would end with paradise may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us make make it our house uh, in the eternal life ya rab inshallah and um uh, paradise is basically garden house of rewards uh, again it's also seven levels the best uh, is the top level and some scholars combined the, the name for each level as you can see in front of you but other says actually there isn't uh, strong evidence or proof that actually those are uh, the names of, of each of the level um, that's basically just uh, different names for paradise uh, both paradise and hellfire both exist now uh, and paradise is where Adam has descended the reason the sheikh is pointing that out and we are saying that uh, both paradise and hellfire exist now and that uh, paradise is where Adam has descended uh, is uh, because Mu'tazila say that paradise and hellfire are not yet created they're going to be created when they are basically like after in the judgment day when people are going to hellfire or going to paradise then uh, it will be created um, and also they say that Adam descended from uh, not from paradise because it wasn't created but from a garden or a high high place um, in this land so uh, that is the end of this lesson um, if you are watching this recorded because you missed the live lesson uh, please feel free to ask questions on our telegram group join the telegram group join the uh, uh, facebook page and get engaged with us ask questions and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us all salam alaikum